welcome to episode 68 of our series on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. Before we get started, I thought it would be helpful to update you on how many names that we've covered so far and how many names that remain on the list. Now, we've discussed so far 687 family names, but we have 790 remaining. Whew. <laughs> I tell you this so that if you request a surname, you will know that it will take me a while to get to it. It's understandable if you would like to know if your name has been covered so far. So, just write me an email to uh, vantagepoint22 at uh, gmail.com. I'll hit reply and attach the file. On today's show, we'll go far and wide in search of the origins and meanings of seven more family names, including one that thankfully doesn't serve as an alternate form of Swine Man. <laughs> so stick around to find out which one. I hope you'll join me. Let's get started. Number one, Absher. As we dive deeper into the list of surnames that viewers have requested, I'm finding more and more Americanized surnames. These are most typical, it seems, among Germanic surnames. This situation might apply to Absher, but there's an English possibility as well as one from Germany. So in England, there's a place in Essex called Upshur. It could also come from residing in an upper class part of an English district. In that case, one would be something of an upstart, hence Upshur. It could also come from the German Habischer, which was given to one who trains hawks. So in that case, it's an occupational surname. I couldn't find Absher among the traditional surnames of Ireland, Scotland, or Wales, so I'm inclined to see Absher as an Americanized form of a German family name. One quick way to find out, absent a paper trail, is to do a Y chromosome test. If it comes back R1BL21, I think that the chance of it being a German name is decreased greatly. Number two, Prather. <clears throat> If you are into conservative political commentary, you might be familiar with the comedian turned Blaze talk show host, Chad Prather. Despite being born in New Jersey, Chad was raised in Georgia, I think he graduated from the University of Georgia too, and strongly identifies as being Southern and, of course, conservative. Just as we found a possible German origin for Absher, it seems that Prather is likewise a German surname for one who hailed from Prath or Praeth, Rhineland, that's in Western Germany. There's an old French name, Prater, which means priest, that comes close to Prather, but I couldn't find a source that suggested that Prather was derived from England or uh, France, which shared hundreds of names thanks to the Normans beginning in the 11th century. Now, if you do a Y chromosome DNA test and it comes back as M269, which is way downstream of R1BL21, you can get closer to eliminating a German origin for your line of Prather. Number three, Big man. <laughs> okay, I have to admit that the comedian in me, which I try to keep hidden from you out of fear of offending someone, required a wee bit of extra fortitude to resist the impulse to have some fun at pig man's expense. One online source points to Staffordshire, England for the place of origin of pig man, which the source claims was given to a person who traded in pigs. Now, I'm glad that it wasn't because they looked like a pig. Now, thankfully, the American Dictionary, or the Dictionary of American Family Names, claims that it's most likely a variant of the English Pickman. <laughs> that name was derived from Picker, which was given to one who worked with a pickaxe or one who stole things. Now, think pickpocket or to pick a lock. In either case, I'm confident that it's an English surname. Number four, Wetzel. If you did a Y chromosome test and you found that you have R1BL21 or a subclade downstream from that haplogroup, it's a good chance or there's a good chance that there was some hanky-panky in your old tree because Wetzel is yet another German surname. But as we discussed a minute ago, the chance of that haplogroup being German is small. Wetzler was originally given to someone named Werner, as in Werner von Braun, the Nazi rocket scientist who later came to America and led the way in NASA's spaceship development programs. By the way, Von Braun was a hero to a group of boys from southern West Virginia back in the 1950s. Their story was told in the 1999 film October Sky. It starred Laura Dern, Chris Cooper, and Jake Gyllenhaal. I highly recommend it. Though the story was set in West Virginia, it was filmed in and around my hometown of Oliver Springs, Tennessee. In fact, the interior shots of Homer's house were filmed in my first cousin's home. At the end of the day, I'm confident that Wetzler is a German surname. Number five, 
McGee, 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 McGee. <laughs> well, and did you know that freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose? If you're about my age, you'll recognize that line as coming from Chris Christopherson's Me and Bobby McGee. Janis Joplin had a huge hit with it in October 1970, released it just a few days before she died. But other notables like Kenny Rogers in the first edition had already recorded it. As far as I know, Bobby McGee was a fictitious person, but the lyrics capture the essence of free love and hippie culture of the 1960s. No doubt, I just offended someone with that statement, but it is what it is. At any rate, the surname McGee is a Scottish name from the southwest of the body land. It meant the son of George Fraser Black says that the surname has been in the Scottish records since 1296. Those are the days of William Wallace and Robert the Bruce. Man, <laughs> that goes back a pretty good ways now. People named McGee relocated to Ulster, so McGee could well be a Scots-Irish surname. Only a paper trail can determine the origin or original line. Man, the origin of your original, the origin of your line of McGee. I'll get it out in just a second. Sorry about that. Number six, Stanley. If you're a consumer of radio or online-based Christian ministry, ministries, you may well have heard of the passing of the Baptist preacher Dr. Charles Stanley. He was a longtime pastor of First Baptist Church in Atlanta. I think he was at First Baptist for like 49 years. Dr. Stanley's surname is of English origin. It was given to one who lived on a rocky or stony land. The surname Stanley has been in Scotland since the 15th century, but Black says that it has an English origin. By now, the Scottish bearers of the name Stanley are enculturated into the culture of Scotland. Moreover, in Ireland, Stanley arrived two centuries earlier than in Scotland. Although the folks with that name on the Emerald Isle are effectively Irish, McClysick recognizes Stanley as an English habitational name. I think you'll need a paper trail to locate the origin of your line of Stanley. Number seven, Garrett. If you're a fan of the myths and legends of the Old West, no doubt you've heard of Henry McCarty or William H. Bonney. If those names have stumped you, you have no doubt heard of his common name, Billy the Kid. It was Pat Garrett who put an end to the life of Billy the Kid, the killer of 21 men during a short 21 years of life on planet Earth. Pat Garrett was born in Alabama, so he had Southern connection. The English surname, Garrett, is an alternate form of Gerard, as in Scotland's Gerard Butler. Not surprisingly, it's found among the traditional surnames of Ireland and Scotland. So I think you'll need a paper trail to locate the origin of your line of Garrett. Well, folks, that's all I have for you today. I hope you got something meaningful out of it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Until I see you again, may the good Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and give you peace. Bye-bye.